Well, in their most recent look into the Bakersfield Police Department, the ACLU of Southern California reported BPD had the highest rate of police homicides per capita out of the 60 largest police departments in the country. Today, in an effort to strengthen the relationship between law enforcement and the community, BPD collaborated with other local groups to host a forum discussing deadly force. 23 ABC's Noelle Lilly was there and tells us what community members and law enforcement had to say. Noelle? Just this form occurred the same day that police organizations like California Highway Patrol and the California State Sher Sheriff's Association dropped opposition to a California bill, AB 392, which tightens the standards under which an officer could use deadly force. The use of deadly force by police officers has been a controversial topic across the United States for years. In the wake of dozens of highly publicized officer-involved shootings of unarmed individuals, communities are asking for more transparency from law enforcement. Thursday, the Bakersfield Police Department aimed to do just that at a community policing workshop. We are going to talk about reality here tonight. We are going to talk about the reality of police use of force. The workshop held at Christian Compassion Church with Greater Bakersfield Legal Assistance brought community members and officers together to establish clarity on why and when officers can or should use excessive or deadly force. And so this was a great opportunity to open up the lines of communication so we could have a voice and they could let us know their side of it and together we can you know, come to a, a, an agreement on what's the best way to move forward and serve the people in our community. BPD explained the laws behind the use of excessive force and gave examples of when officers' actions might not have been warranted. But BPD also demonstrated how quickly police officers have to make decisions for their own safety and the safety of others. You're constantly reevaluating the situation and then deciding from there what you're going to do. Attendees participated in mock scenarios where they acted out how they might handle a dangerous situation as a police officer. Drop that. We'll talk over this, okay? I need you to drop that. I need you to drop that. Participants said the event is a step in the right direction. I think it's a good gesture to have law enforcement be willing to talk to the community, you know, being willing to engage, and take, take questions, uh, explain things. I think it's a good gesture. Local activists said it's a good opportunity to make their concerns known. So it's important for us to come to events like this to amplify our voices so that the people that are protecting us and are enacting legislation, that they can hear it firsthand from the community and how they can, how we can make a partnership to better the situations and to possibly prevent a deadly situation to happen. And officers said they hoped events like this would allow both law enforcement and the community to understand each other's perspective. We're trying to trying to make the transparency so so obvious, and and that there is no wall between law enforcement and the community. We want them to be able to talk to us and understand where we come from and why we do things. Now, AB 392 would tighten the state standard, making it so that an officer would only be allowed to use deadly force in self-defense or in defense of another person or when a dangerous felon is fleeing. AB 392 is expected to be voted on on the full California Assembly, and if signed by Governor Newsom, this would give California one of the toughest police use of force standards in the country. In studio, Noelle Lilly, 23 ABC, connecting you. Coming up, 